Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, number one, Kashain are the people who know and who realize and who remember that they have to meet, they have to face, and they have to return towards their sustainer. That is Kashain are those who are who are God-fearing, who fear hereafter. And Kashain are those who know and who remember that they are going to be asked about the establishment of Salah on the day of judgment. And for them, then Salah will become very easy and would, it would become very convenient to establish Salah. The second point and the second thing is that Kashain are those who assume and those who think that Salah itself is a training, it is a reminder for the day of judgment, for the time when they're going to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hasha'in themselves, they realize that offering Salah five times a day, offering Salah five times a day, we are actually practicing we are actually relieving, receiving training. Actually, it is a reminder that we are going to stand. We are going to stand. The way we stand in our salah, in a similar manner, there, was, there is going to be a day when we are going to stand in a similar manner in front of our Rabb. We are going to face and we are going to meet Malik Yawm al-Din. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Rahman, وَلِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّتَانِ That a person who fears to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment, there will be the Jannah. And the third thing which the traits and the behavior and the mannerism of Hashra'in, this verse explains is, that Hashra'in are those who assume Salah as a meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hashra'in are those who think, who assume that Salah is what? It is actually a meeting of the bondsmen with Allah. So for all those who offer Salah with this frame of mind, who offer Salah with this frame of mind that is it is a meeting with their creator, with their rub, with their sustainer, then salah becomes easy. It becomes enjoyable. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa the gift of his meeting on the night of a session. We know, Hana, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa with the gift of his meeting on the night of a session. And on the night, Allah made the five prayers obligatory also. So we can relate with it like this, that Allah had a meeting, actual meeting with the Prophet and gifted the Ummah with Salah, which itself is a meeting of Allah with his bondsmen. And if you realize how easy is the meeting of a person with Allah, the meeting of a person with the master of masters, the meeting of a person with the ruler of rulers, it is so very extremely easy. And if we compare, it is so difficult to meet the rulers of the world, the masters of the world, how difficult it is to meet the prime minister, the president, the chief minister, the, govern, the governor. We have to take appointments, a waiting in period. And then after delayed appointments and after a long waiting period, there is a short and there is a formal meeting a protocol meeting and that is it. But imagine, imagine Salah, meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so, so easy, so convenient. All we need to do is what? To purify ourselves, to make wudu, to stand facing the Qibla, wear a satr libas and stand facing the Qibla, 
raise hands and say takbir. And the meeting and conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts. And then we can talk to him. We can talk our, we can talk out our heart to him, narrate our worries, our stresses, explain, explain and narrate our desires, our needs. Innama ashku basi wa huzni ilallah. Seems as if salah, it just seems to me as if salah is a hotline. It is just a hotline, a direct, a direct dialing to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So easy, so convenient, so pleasurable, so reassuring, so relaxing, and so, so much more. When Prophet sallallahu was asked, what is Ahsan, man Ahsan? He said, Ahsan is that you offer salah as if you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you see your creator. And if this is not possible for you, if it's, it is not so for you, then you at least offer salah as if he is seeing and watching you. A companion of the Prophet sallallahu said, when I want to talk and converse to Allah, I offer salah. And when I want that my creator, my Allah talks to me, I recite Quran. So this is salah. It is a meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all those, believe me, all those who develop this state of mind and frame of mind, for them, salah becomes extremely easy. Salah has a direct, direct relationship with sabr, with patience. For those whom salah becomes easy, for them, patience and sabr, endurance in the obedience and the path of Allah becomes easy and convenient also. For this, to understand and comprehend this, I would want you to narrate the story of Hazrat Bilal radiallahu ta'ala and who he was one of the pioneers to embrace Islam. He was a slave. He was a black slave. And he turned out to be the pioneers to in, embrace Islam. How severely he was tortured after he accepted Islam and after he converted as a Muslim, his master used to torture him. He was tortured, he was persecuted, he was punished because of his conversion. His master used to beat him. He used to beat him, he used to lash him. And when the master used to get tired, he used to chain him up. And after chaining him up, he used to hand him over to young boys. And these boys used to drag him in the streets of Mecca. And when the boys used to get tired, they used to bring him back to the master and then the master used to make him lie on the hot sand of the desert in the scorching blazing sun he used to be he used to be he used to make him lie down with his back on the hot sizzling sand of the desert land and then he used to place a huge stone on his chest so that he could not move and seeing all these all these persecutions the companions used to ask Hazrat Bilal radiallahu ta'ala and who that how could he stand all that? And you know what he used to comment? He used to say, my brothers, when you go to a marketplace and when you buy a pot of porcelain, then don't you knock it, don't you strike it to check whether it is cracked or not? So you know what? My rub, my sustainer is trying to pick me out. It's trying to choose me. So he's just trying to strike me and he's just putting me to trial to judge my purity and sincerity of my belief and Iman. SubhanAllah, what patience, what endurance. How remarkably steadfast was he in the path of Jannah. 
How did he achieve this level of patience? You know what? In Bukhari, Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala narrates an incident. He explained that one morning after Fajr prayer, Prophet Sallallahu stopped and he put his hand on Hazrat Bilal's shoulder and he stopped him and he asked him, Bilal, which deed of yours, for which deed of yours do you expect the most reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The question of Prophet Sallallahu I repeat, that he asked Hazrat Bilal radiallahu ta'ala and who, that from all, amongst from all the deeds he was doing, for which did he expect that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him the maximum reward? And then Prophet added, because you know what? Today, Bilal, today, I heard the sound of your footsteps ahead of mine in Jannah. Subhanallah, this is Bilal Khabushi radiallahu ta'ala who. This is the merit of the companions of Prophet Sallallahu That is why we call them the An'amta alayhim. Hazrat Bilal radiallahu ta'ala and who said that Prophet Sallallahu there is one deed which I perform, which I perform with perseverance and with regularity. And what is that? That whenever, whenever I perform wudu, I offer some salah according to my capacity. This is what? This is the Hayatul Vudu. So if you compare and contrast, today people find it hard, find it difficult to perform Vudu and to offer and establish salah. Even the obligatory salah, people find it difficult. But for Hazrat Bilal radiallahu ta'ala and who, even the tahayyatul wudu was so light and was so easy. So what do we gather? What we need to gather is that for Hazrat Bilal, for whom salah was so light, was so easy, was so convenient, was so enjoyable, even the even the supererogatory salah of the Hayatul Wuzu was so light and easy for him. And he was so persistent in establishing this supererogatory salah for him. Then the hardships and the obedience of Allah were also easy. The heavy stones, the heavy stone slates were as light as flowers for him because salah was light for him because salah was easy and convenient for him. Allahumma ja'alni saburan wa ja'alni shakura. Allahumma ja'alna minhum 